I have talked about many fanfictions on this show, uh, both in my Abominations of Fanfiction segment and outside of it, and you may have noticed that I have largely avoided crackfix while doing that. Now, crackfix, for those who are unfamiliar, is basically just something that is completely ridiculous and completely outside the realm of canon possibilities in whatever franchise we're talking about. Now, crackfic does not necessarily mean that it was written to be purposely stupid, those would be trollfix. Trollfix are, you know, again, ones that are meant to be purposely stupid, kind of like My Immortal, almost. Now, some people believe that My Immortal is meant to be genuine, I am almost 100% certain that it was meant to be a troll, but basically things that are emulating that style are pretty much always meant to be troll fix. However, the setup for My Immortal is not necessarily a troll fic. Like, you could conceivably have a crack fic that is meant to be taken 100% seriously, that is about a girl named Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, who is a vampire who goes to Hogwarts and goes on all these weird adventures that completely break Harry Potter canon. Like, that is possible. And so that brings us to today's segment, which is about a fanfiction called Until the End of Time. It's a very old one, came out around 2003 or 2004, and it is all about Goku from the Dragon Ball franchise falling in love with Anne Frank. You know, the girl who hid in an attic from the Nazis for a couple of years and then got killed in a concentration camp? You, you remember? Yeah, that's what this is about. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Now, the author of Until the End of Time claims that this was meant to be a troll fic. I don't entirely buy into that. We'll, we'll get more into that at the end, but I just want you to keep that in mind as we go through this, because this one, it's not very short. We should be able to get through the whole thing here. But just keep in mind that there are people who would, with 100% sincerity, write something like this and mean for it to be taken seriously. Just because it's a ridiculous concept doesn't automatically mean it was meant to be a joke. Until the end of time. Author's note. Hi, I'm Gopher Chan, and this is my first piece of fanfiction. It was my brother's idea, an Anne Frank slash DBZ crossover. I am big fans of both. And then the actual story begins thusly. Anne sighed as she sat in her room, staring at her wall. She just finished writing in her diary and had nothing to do. Life was boring in the secret annex, but it was better than the alternative. It was all right talking to Peter and Margot, but they were both such quiet people, unlike the always active Anne. Oh, okay, um, anyone familiar with the story of Anne Frank knows that while they were hiding in that attic from the Nazis, they had to stay quiet. You know, they couldn't go around making noise. They weren't playing drums and tap dancing up there. They were holding still as much as possible during the daytime to avoid attracting any undue attention. So Anne was not active. She couldn't be active. That's really why she started writing in her diary, or part of why she wrote in her diary so much. All of a sudden, a flash of light appeared in the room. Anne jumped back, stifling a scream. Before she could run out the closed door, she noticed that the person who appeared in the flash was not a Nazi officer, but someone who she had never seen before. So, yes, this person who just appeared in a flash of light out of nowhere was Son Goku, the guy from Dragon Ball. This dude, if you are not familiar with him, if you are familiar with it, everyone's familiar with Dragon Ball, okay? It's a terrible show, but everyone's familiar with it. So, he just appeared out of nowhere. He apparently time-traveled. My name is Goku, the mysterious stranger said. Anne nerv nervously put her hand in his. He bent down and kissed it softly, then let go of her. Is that something Goku would do? Okay, like I said, Dragon Ball is a terrible show. A terrible franchise, I should say, because it's a bunch of shows. So I have not watched that much of it. But is that something Goku would do? Would he, like, grab a teenage girl's hand and kiss it while they... Okay. So Goku briefly explains to Anne that he time-traveled, and that he didn't mean to wind up here, but his power cells will be restored soon, and so he can leave, and Anne is just instantly in love with him, just, just, just because. Well, sir, she said, you may stay in my room as long as you like. She, she didn't have her own room in the annex. Annex is what it was referred to usually, but... Like, it was very crowded. There were a bunch of people all squeezed together. She didn't have her own room, so I'm not sure what you're... Uh, okay. So they sit on the bed together in silence for a minute, and then Anne works up the courage to kiss Goku on the cheek because she's just 
already so infatuated with him, and I don't know why no one else has come over to investigate what's happening. Like, you know, they hear Anne talking to somebody, they probably heard a noise, saw a flash of light, like, you'd think her parents or Peter or someone would come in and go, whoa, what's going on? But, I mean, I guess she has her own room in this version of the story, and it's also soundproofed. Good to know. And anyways, Goku tells her that she's a very beautiful girl, but he also mentions he's already married, and they can't do it. Um, he does not mention that he's a grown man and she's about 15 at the time this takes place. Uh, I feel like that's relevant. And I know that she's 15 because she hid in that annex for several years, but she was arrested, along with everyone else up there, on August 4th of 1944. And it's mentioned in Chapter 2, which takes place a month after this, that a Nazi officer comes in to arrest her. So if we assume that the Nazi officer came in the same day in this timeline as they did in our timeline, then this would be in July 1944, therefore Anne was 15 years old. I mean, let, let's be honest, the author didn't think of that, but it, it it's my headcanon, okay? It makes some sense. And when Anne finds out that Goku is married, she is just so hurt and betrayed that this man she met literally less than a minute ago is married and she can't be with him. Nothing ever goes right, she cried out. I have to go now. My power cells have recharged, said Goku. Anne was in tears by now, staring at the wall so she wouldn't see Goku's face. He smiled a sad smile and disappeared in another flash, out of Anne's life forever. Anne never forgot him, though. Not until the end of time. And then a brief author's note. How did everyone like it? Please review as it's my first story. So that was just part one, and... There, there is a part two where Goku comes back, so clearly he didn't go out of her life forever, which makes me feel like this wasn't planned. Like, originally, the author had planned for this to just be one part and have it be really, really brief there, and then he just decided later to add the part two. Like, he got inspiration and decided to put some other stuff there. Part two, a Saiyan's love. One month, well, it didn't feel like a month, to Anne Frank, a Jew hiding from the Nazis, it seemed like a year. I mean, that a year is a long time, but wouldn't it be more dramatic to say it seemed like an eternity, or it seemed like forever ago since she had last seen the handsome stranger known as Goku, or something like that? I don't know, I, I get time would probably pass slow when you're hiding like that, but still, that, that's an odd line. So the narrator goes on about how Anne and Goku are tied by the unbreakable red string of fate, whatever that means, and then... Anne is writing in her diary, and it's apparently her last entry because a Nazi breaks in and tries to arrest them. Her door flew open, and a tall soldier was visible in the doorway, glaring at her. The cries of her family members and friends were tuned out as Anne only thought of one thing. She stood up and followed the soldier out of her room, down the stairs, and into the back of a truck. So this is it, she said quietly to herself. I'll never see him, my one true love, ever again. And all those years of hiding, they were for naught. And... I guess they just left her family and everyone else back in the annex, like they were just looking for Anne. I, I suppose. I, I don't know. It's it's fine, I guess. Anyways, Anne realizes that she left her diary back in the annex, and so she's like, wait, I need to get my diary! So she runs off, and then the soldier shoots her in the leg. Anne lay on the floor, feeling searing pain run through her leg where the bullet had met its mark. The Gestapo officer menacingly moved towards her, grinning, when all of a sudden there was a blinding flash of light, causing the officer to shield his eyes. A huge cloud of smoke appeared next to Anne, blocking her from the soldier's vision. When the smoke cleared, he was in for quite a surprise. There was Goku holding Anne in his arms, standing next to a huge metal capsule. Goku, cried Anne, you came back for me. Goku smiled. Anything for you, my dear, he said. Our love will never be lost. Not until the end of time. That is the second title drop we've gotten. I just, I, I really want to emphasize, this is not very long, and we've gotten two title drops. Like, you don't even need one title drop, really. Sometimes it can work, but having two just seems excessive, I suppose, but it also seems like someone who is very young, like, say, their early teens, and is trying to write a dramatic story, that seems like something they would do, is repeatedly drop that one line, which sounds really profound. Also, if Goku has a time machine, why didn't he just go back to right after he initially met Anne? Like, if he really wanted to come back here because he was just so in love with her, why didn't he just come right back to this time and be like, oh, sorry, I was gone for like two months in my time, but it's only been a few seconds to you. Let's run off now. Like, 
like, why did he wait this long? Like, if he had waited a few more minutes, then she probably could have died. It's just... Okay. So Goku knocks out the Gestapo officer, like, doesn't obliterate him with a single punch the way you'd think the Goku would from Dragon Ball Z, but whatever. Nazi scum, muttered Goku as he spit on his enemy's limp body, then returns to Anne. Here, I have something for you, Goku said as he removed a small bean from his pocket. What on earth is this? asked Anne. Goku smiled, remember how ignorant she was to everyday life to him. A senzu bean, he said. Just eat it and it will cure your leg. Now, I don't know enough about Dragon Ball Z to know if a senzu bean would cure a gunshot wound to your leg that quickly. I think it would, because I know it heals you, but... Again, Dragon Ball's terrible and I don't feel like checking. <laughs> I'm gonna get so many hate comments for saying that. Dragon Ball sucks, guys. Accept it and move on with your lives. So Anne eats the senzu bean, and then she's healed, and then she jumps on Goku's back, and he says they have some Nazi ass to kick, and they fly all the way over to Berlin, and they see a parade of a bunch of soldiers and tanks, and then Hitler is standing at a balcony just watching them, because I guess that's just what evil dictators always do. They just kind of stand at balconies and watch their armies move. Stay here, Goku said, dropping Anne in a shaded area under a tree. He then flew straight towards the parade of tanks, fist outstretched, screaming as loud as he could. The soldiers below scattered in terror while the tanks tried to aim their cannons at him. He was too quick and nimble for them, however, and opened the hatch of a nearby panzer, then headed inside. After dispatching of the soldiers in control of the war machine, he took the wheel. He fired round after round into the crowds of Nazi soldiers, occasionally firing at the other tanks. You'd think, you'd think this is just a regular tank that the others could just fire at it and take it out. Like, I guess Goku's power level also goes to whatever vehicle he's driving. Is that how that works? I don't know, but th that's how it works here. When all of the dust cleared, there were only two people remaining on the parade ground. Goku, the Saiyan hero, and Adolf Hitler, the most evil man to ever walk the earth. Anne watched from nearby fearfully as she saw the two men stare at each other for what seemed like hours. Her one true love and her ultimate oppressor. Do you know anything about Goku? Like, really... Do anything at all about him? He's just, he's just your one true love? Because... Okay. So, Hitler said jovially, you took out all of my men. However, you aren't going to defeat me. And then Hitler jumps down from the platform and grabs a chain gun and fires at Goku, and Goku has to dive behind cover, and it's like super epic and stuff, even though you'd feel like a gun would not even daze Goku. Like, he fights dudes who destroy planets, and he kind of shrugs off a lot of their attacks, so... Alright. Hitler burst into a laugh as Goku looked on quizzically. The mustachioed man slowly rose into the air as his brown hair and pencil mustache turned a blonde color, and his brown eyes turned blue. <laughs> he is an ubermensch! Goku reeled in horror. Hitler continued laughing, then finally said, Goku, you came here expecting to find a madman, but instead you found a god. Hitler had become a super saiyan. Oh, yeah, okay, that that, that makes more sense than being an ubermensch, but... I mean, they look kind of similar, really. Like, super muscular, blonde hair, blue eyes, white, super tall, like... That, that, that checks out. So Goku heroically throws a bunch of punches at Adolf Hitler's Super Saiyan Ubermensch body, and then Hitler decides to cleverly counter by throwing one of his own punches, and it hits Goku and he goes flying off and into a building, and he's like super badly hurt, and Hitler's like, whoa ha ha, I have won already. Goku, however, was not ready to give up. Bruised and battered, he rose from the ground, limping in Hitler's direction. The Nazi leader laughed. You still want to fight! Don't you know when to give up, boy? You can hardly walk. And you expect to beat me, conqueror of Europe? Goku ignored Adolf's taunts as he continued to stumble his way forward. Finally, the two arch rivals were standing face to face. Goku stared Hitler into the eye and then screamed, This is for love! And flew up into the sky, his hair turning blonde, his eyes blue, and an aura of power radiating from him. Hitler looked on in horror at Goku. He had made the ultimate achievement. He had become a super ultra power saiyan. I don't know if that's a real thing, but it could be. I mean, I think Super Saiyan God is a thing by now. Like, it, this franchise has been going on for 30 years longer than it should have. Like, it's just Super Saiyan. Okay, Super Saiyan 2. Now we need something more powerful. Super Saiyan 3. And it's just... I, I don't know. This could be a real thing, but I, I don't know. It Maybe it's canon. Goku made a cup shape with his hands, aiming at Hitler as he belted out the words, 
Kame, Hame, Ha! As a beam of pure energy shot at his enemy, disintegrating the Nazi leader's body, Goku then collapsed to the ground in a heap, exhausted from the fight. So, that's it. Uh, Goku decided to destroy the entire Nazi army in Berlin, or at least a substantial chunk of it, and then he also fought Hitler, who was apparently a Super Saiyan. I, and I know, I know this seems like a troll fic. You, you're thinking, like, no one could ever possibly write this sincerely. But, again, give me a minute. We'll get to that. Two years later, Ann and Goku had finally reached the date of their wedding. After the battle, Ann and Goku had destroyed the time machine and took a boat to Australia. They changed their names and lived new lives, ready to start over. The two young people looked into each, each other's eyes as they kissed, as the reverend pronounced the man and wife reverend. She was Jewish. Finally, it seemed, Anne was at peace, and they would always be together until the end of time. And that's the end. We got a third title drop there. And, yeah, so that was a short little adventure into... Well, I, I don't even want to say adventure into insanity, because it wasn't really insane. It was just strange. Like... Really strange. There is an animated adaptation of this on YouTube if you ever feel like watching it. It's it's worth a watch. It, it made me laugh a bit. But yes, pretty much everyone reading that would probably go and think, okay, yeah, that's, that's a troll fic. Like, that's purposely so strange and stupid and over the top with it that there's no way someone would write that and think, yeah, this is meant to be taken seriously. And I wouldn't blame you for thinking that at first, especially considering that the author apparently later claims that it was a troll fic. However, there are a few things that make me feel like this was written earnestly, and then the author just got kind of embarrassed and decided to pretend that he was in on the joke the whole time. Because, number one, if it was a troll fic, then it's not a particularly good one because the author just came out and said, yeah, haha, it's a joke, you're supposed to laugh at it. Like, it's not as funny then. Like, it's much funnier if it's from, or if you're not sure if it's meant to be a troll fic or not, you know? Like, again, my immortal, most people are unsure of, of uh, whether it's supposed to be a troll fic or a sincere one, and that uncertainty is where a lot of the humor comes from, because if you're like, okay, someone uh, meant to do this sincerely, we were supposed to take this seriously, and then it's funny. But if it's someone just trying to be wacky and goofy and fun, then it's kind of funny, but it's just not as funny. And that's why I'm really grateful that the author of My Immortal has never revealed themselves, so we never have found out for sure, even though I am pretty sure that it's a troll. Like, we've just never found out uh, beyond any doubt because the author isn't here to tell us, whereas in this one, the author came right out and tell, told us, so if this was a troll fic, then they didn't do a very good job because that sucks a lot of the humor out of it. On top of that, this is not written as terribly as you would expect from a troll fic. You know, like, there aren't any spelling errors that I noticed. There were only a few small grammatical errors, like I was able to figure out what was going on pretty easily. Uh, the only real issue was that part one is all one big paragraph, and then part two is split into like three big paragraphs, which is a little obnoxious to read, but it's just not uh, that crazy. You know, it doesn't feel like someone trying to be wacky and goofy, and I feel like if this was a troll fic, they would lean a lot more into that. This feels like someone who doesn't really know how to write, but is still competent when it comes to, you know, spelling and stuff. They they have the spelling capacity of a sixth grader, basically, which, I, I don't know, it just really doesn't seem like a troll fic would, would have that. It seems like they would lean into being stupid. And on top of that, part one seems like it was supposed to be the end. You know, they, they had that title drop and it said Goku walked out of her life forever. And that seems like a sort of finality. You know, it seems like someone just wrote this very short story about Anne Frank meeting and falling in love with Goku instantaneously. And then they're like, okay, that's the end. Thanks, guys. And then they, j they just came up with an idea later and went, oh, what if Goku came back and fought Hitler? And so they just put that all in there. And again, I feel like if this was a troll fic, then number one, you wouldn't have seemed like... Uh, it was the end at part at the end of part one, and number excuse me, and number two, this either would have gone on a lot longer or it would have been much shorter. Like again, this is already pretty short, but I feel like they would have just cut out most of that beginning stuff, and it would have just been Goku comes back in time as Anne is uh, meeting a Gestapo officer who's about to arrest her, and then he saves her, and then they're just instantly in love, and then he goes off and fights Hitler. Like I feel like it would either be that, 
or it would be like some 10 or 20,000 word epic that goes on for a long time and every chapter just has dumb shit happening until eventually you have Goku fighting Hitler and that fight alone lasts like the last six chapters of the story. Like, that seems to me like it would be more of a troll fit because, again, you either have the really committed one or the lazier one, but just this weird middle ground here doesn't quite fit because, to me, this feels like the author... Uh, who probably was a young person, got all these ideas for like a longer epic story and was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And then they started writing it. And you'll notice at the beginning section when Anne is getting arrested, there is a lot more detail of things. And I think they got a little ways into it and realized, oh man, this is taking a lot more time and energy than I thought. And then so they took most of the ideas for this epic battle they had, which in their mind would have been like three books long and been the craziest, biggest thing they could ever imagine, and then they just had trouble putting that onto the page, and then they just sort of condensed it and threw it in there. And I feel like that happens because in both online fanfiction and online original fiction written by inexperienced authors, you see that sort of thing a lot. And I experienced that myself once or twice, both with things I published and things I did not. Uh, like, you come up with this idea, you realize it's taking much, much longer, and so you almost kind of rush so that you can get to the cool parts and rather than, you know, just going forward writing the cool parts and then filling in the blanks later, which is what some professional authors do, uh, you just compress everything and then you're like, cool, it's out, it's, it's there. And, like, that's not a bad thing. You know, I don't want to disparage young writers too much who are just learning their craft, but that is a thing you see a lot. Like, you see climaxes that seem like they're really distant and then they just sort of come out of nowhere and this story, which seemed like it would be, like, full novel length, is only a couple of chapters. And so, to me, wrapping this up a little bit, this really does feel like Until the End of Time was written and meant to be taken totally seriously. And then the author uh, got a few years older, realized that it was super cringy, but also realized that it was a tad distasteful. <laughs> like... I don't know, I, I personally don't think it's that distasteful because it's just a little too stupid to be distasteful, but I wouldn't blame other people for feeling like, okay, this was a real girl who really did die under horrible circumstances. Maybe don't do all of this with her with her memory. Just just maybe don't. But I don't know, I it, again, it's just too stupid to even be offended by or anything, so... I don't know, though. Th this really does feel like someone tried to write this sincerely, and they tried to, like, genuinely tell a heartwarming epic story, and they just failed at it, and then they're trying to use the trolling excuse as a cover. Like, I I could be wrong there, but I don't know. This was... <laughs> this is a fun episode. It, it almost reminds me of my last episode, which was about Phineas and Ferb and the Rwandan genocide, and, you know, that one was meant to be taken 100% seriously, but that one was also just a fairly decently written story like i'm i'm not even joking it was a decently written story with like actual you know there was an actual story there were actual characters and i, I don't know just i don't think that until the end of time was a troll fic it's definitely a crack fic though and that's about all i'll uh see you later thanks for watching bye Super special thanks to everyone who has watched this far. You've seen the entire thing. Except for the credits, of course. These names here are my Patreon patron people. Uh, the $10 and up patrons are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Flax, Great Grebo, Johnny St. Clair, Carcat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Micaphone, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Vevictus, and Wesley, and of course, all the other names you see here. These people, they're all great, and if you watched this far, maybe consider becoming a patron so you can get your name on the list here and also get early access to videos and other stuff. If you don't feel like doing that, you can also become a YouTube channel member, which is like the same thing except worse, and you could also, like, you know rate the video and comment on it and subscribe to help share it around if you don't feel like doing any of that or if you're unable to like you know that's cool too i guess um you're all you're all cool people i'll, I'll see you later goodbye